tutorial is about the use of colour washes. And by that I mean um, watercolour. And so uh, what I like to use, and I'm going to sort of just hold this up to the camera. And these are the liquid watercolours? Yep, these are, I use Dr Martin's concentrated watercolour. Mm -hmm. um, they are really sort of good to dilute and I, I like to use them in a very dilute form. And I've stretched my paper and we're going to do another tutorial about stretching paper particularly. But this is just to demonstrate, you know, laying on a, a wash and I think the key to laying down a sort of successful wash is to have lots of watercolour mixed up, so you've got a plenty of watercolour there, and to lay it down in a nice sort of even way so that you're painting into, into the... And how do you make it so it's even, or are you just... It, by putting it on quickly, mm. uh, not doing little bits and bits and bits, but, but having mm. a nice full brush Being loaded with paint with it and, just going. and laying it down across like that um, and then the next once you sort of lay down a wash of this sort you can then I'm going to do the whole thing and come down here um, you can then dry it with a hairdryer and I'm going to let you do that Katie yay oh this is a fancy hairdryer <laughs> As you dry it, you can just help it a little bit so you can control the flow uh, of the paint as you're doing. So, paintbrush in one hand, more colour brush in the other, just so you get a nice, even dry with no hard edges. That's the idea of sort of laying down a successful wash. So, you just get this even tone. Over the past. And what you can also do, and I'm just doing this now, is keep, keep, keep the dry. Oh, but I don't know. Okay. You can also uh, just create, if you want, little sort of uh, bits of texture that you maybe use as you dry. So don't worry too much if you have anything that sort of doesn't dry completely. You can incorporate that into what you're doing with your wash. If you heard any of that. <laughs> yes, above the noise of a hairdryer. But um, but I think that's the, the, the key, is to lay down the colour wash quickly and then dry it quickly. Mm. That's the thing. And then try and avoid sort of the marks that occur when it dries irregularly. But don't worry too much about that either, because there are always things you can do. Yeah. The, Depends what you're experimenting with, I guess, exactly. or what you're... I mean, because are. because what you can then do, and I, I enjoy doing this a lot, is um, you can work into uh, any piece in watercolour as well. So you can sort of define what you're doing just by drawing into a wash with your with a paintbrush. So this is a way of sort of creating rather soft detail. Um, from the sort of places where the watercolour dries. And you often see this, you know, done when you see these marvellous Chinese and Japanese watercolourists often use the way that paint dries to then create these mystical, misty, mountainy landscapes. Mm. by drawing into. The other great master of this sort of thing is an illustrator called uh, Elizabeth Zweger and she has a fantastic 
way of creating sort of suggested landscapes out mm. of the way that the watercolour dries on, on so paper. It's kind of letting the watercolour dictate what... Can do, yeah, mm. can, can do, depending on, on sort of how you're doing. So, so it becomes sometimes laying down a wash is a really nice way to start a piece mm. of work so that then you're actually working into the, um, the wash um, rather than sort of doing the drawing and then colouring the drawing. Mm. But equally, what you can do as well, and I'm going to, again, sort of introduce maybe uh, another sort of visual element here. You can draw into a wash. So you can lay down your initial colour wash almost as if it's the tone of the paper and then you can just start to sort of illustrate you know sort of introduce your own element over the top i'm using a conte pastel pencil but you could equally use a dip pen with ink you could use a, a, a paintbrush and draw an ink over the top as long as it's waterproof ink and so you can create another sort of element and then you can take another sort of wash, and this is a sort of, you know, ochreish wash, and you can lay that over your drawing, again to sort of make it sort of stand out against, against the background. And you can work out combinations, you know, sort of uh, blue, orange works well because orange sort of pops when you put it over. Blue, so if you've got complementary colours. Complementary yeah. colours, yes. Red, green, you know, there are various things. And particularly if you're using it in very dilute form, mm. it just gives it a little sort of zing. You can just, and then you can take the your hairdryer and just fire it up. A bit. literally watching paint dry. <laughs> Dry, you can dry that and then you can also then work into it again with a colour wash just to create maybe some shadow and some detailing. And I enjoy actually working in this way where you you draw and then you also draw with with the watercolour wash. Mm. Uh, Using it almost like an ink. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, and, and you can do this any which way. There's no sort of you know, particular way to do it. You can be very particular in your colours. You can add colours like I'm doing now. And then you can sort of every so often dry them. <laughs> When Katie and I are working in the studio uh, together, every so often one of us will be doing some uh, detailing, the other will be hair drying, you know, drying the 
paint so it's forever it's like being in a pause what's on the tv <laughs> yeah it's sometimes like a sort of yeah hairdressing salon in here with our hair dryers going as we dry the, the drawings and then actually just just with you know it's a we can add i love sort of textural quality sometimes you can get in in watercolor smoky effects dragon's breath and i think the idea of color washes in a sense is exactly that they're washes you wash over the the, the drawings as, as you go um, to create textures and really just keep going as, as, lo as long as you you want and you can stop at any any point and the last thing i i would say is the is highlights and highlights are a fun final um, thing to do where you just take a little bit of gouache and you are the you can use the queen of highlights, aren't you? Uh, I, I think the king would be better of, of highlights, but it um, <laughs> depends how camp you want me to be. But um, I see you as a queen. Thank you. And then you can just add just some white highlights in or over your colour wash, just to bring out some detailing. And you can sometimes, if you've gone over, sort of inconveniently, you've gone over some sort of details, you can just gently retouch blotches that you don't particularly want to show. And you can go as far into creating highlights as you want, really, as, as you... You don't know when to stop. No, because it's a very enjoyable one. Can even go into the lands, into the distant landscape, and create little hazy effects with your highlights. All based on a sort of color wash laid down, another color wash, bit of drawing over the top, and and you're starting to create a sort of textured, textured picture really quite simply and efficiently.